Good day, everyone. This is Paul Travitsky reporting for the Auburn University Green Team here in Charleston, South Carolina. The date is September 29th, 2008, and we are meeting up with the representatives from Earth Seed, located in my home state of Pennsylvania. Earn Seed is one of our sponsors that have donated their time and money to help us with our trip to Berkeley, California. Earn supplies the highest quality seeds, mixes, and bioengineering products for restoration, reclamation, and conservation applications. We met up with Dan Arnett and his fiancée Darlene here at the USS Yorktown to thank them for the support Ernst has given us. From there, we left to go to Soberton, Georgia to meet up with Mark Rowland of Range Fuels, another one of our sponsors, and a whole group of supporters to witness a new site that Range Fuels is constructing. Mark explains. What Range Fuels is doing is uh, trying to make fuel-grade ethanol from something other than corn, something other than sugar cane, something other than the food that can go on your table. We're trying to make fuel-grade ethanol from wood chips primarily, but we can use other sources of cellulose as well. Not just wood chips, but uh, energy crops like switchgrass, sorghum, miscanthus, and other types of trees that are fast growing and produce a lot of cellulose. Dr. David Bransby and Wayne Keith were given time to talk to a group of local students and adults to show them the bio truck and explain how it works. We, uh, goes down through the system. If you burn biomass in an oxygen restricted environment, the byproduct is water, vapor, and carbon dioxide. If you heat those two products up somewhere between two and three thousand degrees, you'll get a thermochemical reaction that'll turn it into carbon monoxide, hydrogen, with a little bit of methane. That's a, uh, it goes through the uh, system. I've got a little uh, I call it a cyclone filter here. It spins the gases to get any particles out of them. It goes into this, looks like sideboards. It cools the gases as they go around. You want to get your gases as cool as you can get them because you have more BTUs per cubic foot. The cooler you get the gas. Okay, so this right here, these are not rails. This is a radiator. Okay, the gas is running through here to get cooled down. Uh, Continues through the system, goes down under the truck. I've got a couple of settlement tanks down there for condensation uh, to separate and any soot. It comes back up in this container as a filter. I've tried several different filters and I've come up with the uh, hay. The best thing I've found is uh, hay. It's cheap, I've got plenty of it. You use a hay filter. Then it goes around and up to the motor. The gas is just a uh, weak, slow-burning gas, but it has octane rating of about 180, which means if a, if a motor was designed for it, you'd get a lot more out of it. These are just plain gasoline motors here, but the engine was designed with a compression ratio of about 16 to 1 to do much, uh, much better. Uh, it takes, uh, with what we've been uh, experimenting with, it takes about 12 pounds biomass replacing down the gas line, somewhere between 12 and 18 pounds. Uh, 50 pounds of wood has been carrying this uh, 80 miles. We thanked them for their support and moved on to Auburn, Alabama to rest for our following location. Next up, Lafayette, Louisiana. This is Paul Travitsky for the Auburn University Green Team saying goodbye for now.